Users lose all sense of reality and enter another world. Mm. Remember, do not underestimate the power of the PlayStation. XO, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PNC Insider Show about everything PlayStation. A small bite size show about everything PlayStation. Still kind of get used to that. But, anyways, this show. I talk about Xbox a lot, ironically. It will have PlayStation uh, talk in it, but it's. It ties with PlayStation, but it does with Xbox too. But, jump right into it, so let's start. So, yes, as of today, um, I'm actually recording this way late. I'm not sure if I'm going to post it tonight or tomorrow, but. Anyways, uh, Microsoft has confirmed that yes, Call of Duty and other Activision slash Blizzard titles will arrive on PlayStation even during the current deal they just made with Activision. It says to be clear, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of existing agreement with Activision. And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into future so that Sony fans continue to enjoy the games that they love. Great. On my end. A lot of people do, but a lot of Xbox fans hate it. Kind of threw me off a loop because it's like Call of Duty makes way too much money for them to put it on just simply on Game Pass and PC, and that's it. It felt weird, like wow, they gave them a lot of money just to put it on their platform, and, and no realistic they would actually kind of lose money over time. Well, but as of today, they kind of confirmed like, hey, we're still putting these games on PlayStation, and obviously. They're gonna have some benefits with Game Pass. Like, hey, get it on day one Game Pass, cheaper, probably some Xbox exclusive perks to it, which honestly, I don't think people really give a crap about that. Uh, it's gonna most likely be skins and maybe exclusive gun, but people want to play this on PlayStation. And today they got the answer. Or well, going back to what I just said earlier, how Microsoft will probably lose money if they made it, if they made it exclusive to Xbox and PC. Call of Duty was top of the MPD charts of uh, PlayStation consoles. They want those numbers as well. Um, obviously, they're going to get a cut from that. Uh, so those sales on PlayStation will go to them. People are saying this is a response to Destiny, which I don't think. It's more of this. So apparently people going around by the FTC about how they had to make a kind of like tell them like, hey, even though we, we did something major with buying this publisher, we can still give the people what we want to degree so we can stay away from the monopoly scare and all that stuff. And that looks like be the response to that most likely. People say it's Destiny, which is not Destiny, but Bungie. I don't think that's the case. It was, at least takes a time, you know. They didn't respond to something a few days ago. Like, oh, we got to change it. Nah, that's not the case. But more so, how would this change Call of Duty or yeah, Call of Duty going forward? And honestly, I don't. It's interesting because, you know, PlayStation is the Call of Duty machine now. I think from, where is it? from the game game industry biz uh like call of duty vanguard's number one in box office charts and activision shooter primary sold on playstation performance with ps5 accounting for 41 percent of sales for ps4 29 xbox one 19 percent and xbox series x and s is 11 percent that's a very small percentage for xbox for call of duty wow i didn't know it was that low that says a lot about ps5 and freaking call of duty i know call of duty has been said as we decline over time but people are buying them you know casual gamers load to pick up call of duty with like 2k or something it's a very go-to easy option for setting the game with your console and call of duty is still pushing units on ps5 uh, like i was saying i don't think it's gonna after this news i don't think we'll see something really dramatic compared to what we originally thought which would be oh it's gonna be exclusive to pc and xbox nah i think it's gonna be the same to a degree it's gonna be slight changes obviously the game pass difference you either pay seventy dollars or you're gonna pay whatever the subscription is with Game Pass. But yeah, regarding the seventy dollar price tag versus Game Pass, you know, despite Game Pass existing, some games that's also available on Play PS5, PlayStation, whatever, and the Game Pass, uh, people are willing to buy a seventy dollar game or sixty dollar whatever. People are willing willing to buy those games despite game pass existing so i don't think that 70 dollars uh, is going to shy people away um this news kind of gave people like the confidence to like keep their well, not keep a playstation but you know like don't buy xbox to prefer consoles or don't get a better pc to play certain games and i hope this applies to something like spyro or crash i was watching a video earlier today that some people say like no xbox doesn't have their ratchet clank um, so they can use Crash and Spyro for that. They don't have their Mario, so they can use Crash and Spyro for that. Which I hope that's not the case. I'm a Spyro fan. 
that was my very first PlayStation game on PlayStation 1. I, I think it will. It's Crash did well on PlayStation because when people think of Crash, they don't think of Xbox or Nintendo. I think of PlayStation and it just people buy it on PlayStation because it just makes sense there. Same with a lot of games with uh, regarding anything really, but not just Activision, but but the logic still applies. That's all I can say for it, because it's like, that. I don't think anything is going to be dramatically changed. I, I kind of glad this happened, because it's like a breather finally, thank God. Uh, so, PlayStation fans, if you want to play Call of Duty, like 22 Beyond, there you go. Keep your PS5, or you don't have to play on Xbox or PC. You got it right there on your console. So what do you guys think? Um, we talked about the Activision uh, deal uh, in the past podcast episode. And also recently, um, we talked about Sony and Bungie on a recent episode of uh, Drunken Ship Podcast. You should check that out. It's available on YouTube right now. Or you can look at podcast services by searching Drunken Ship Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, any podcast services. We're up there. Just find our name and you can listen to it or watch it on YouTube. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Um, I, I'm glad this happened. Kind of relaxed because because the news when it first dropped it was like world breaking. But now after this, it's kind of like, oh man, it's it, 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 it's funny because it's like you sp- spent so much money, but you're not pitting that exclusive. I should have talked about this through the video, but I'm in the video. But it's it's just like another video itself. But. Yeah, when you think about it more, they just wanted to make people push Game Pass and get some revenue off the sales on PlayStation. But when you think about it, I think we kind of like overreacted a bit. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Take care. And hopefully I'll see you next week for a new PS8 video. Anything can happen. Like literally anything can happen in the gaming industry right now. So I'm just listening and I got to respond. So peace. Long live PlayStation.